And hello everybody, welcome on into the last episode, for now, of Alan Wake 2 Final Draft, at least until we get the DLC drops for uh, Lake House and Night Springs. Um, I do want to apologize for the inconvenient time for some, um, just to date the episode, it is currently Christmas Eve, and I know some people are with their families right now, I am actually, as soon as the stream ends, running over to do the exact same, but otherwise, if we don't do it now, it will be until Wednesday. So we have, it'll be like three days from now before we can finish up the game. And I think I need to get some assets from the end of the game for the next video. So the quicker we get this done, the quicker we get the next video out for everybody. Um, but that's really about it. Again, apologies for any convenience. Um, I just want to also say for those who celebrate, Merry Christmas. Hope your holidays go well and your families are doing well as well. What's the what's this music track, Yaxin? It's um, f I believe it's either from Quantum Break or Control. I don't recall. I'll I'll ask a yellow bat and I'll let you know the next time we uh, do a stream. But anyways, all let's go ahead and get all the formalities out of the way, and we're gonna get f moving forward on a Dark Ocean summoning. Um, hello. If this is your first time finding the channel, my name is Dean. We mostly do uh, long form video essays on the channel. And we focus primarily on the Remedy verse. We also do things like uh, Psychonauts, Hellblade, God of War, things of that nature. 
Um, since this is the end, we are going to be spoiling basically everything in the Remedy Connected Universe with the exception of the ending of Final Draft. So if you haven't played the other ones before, you have been warned. Anyways, all let's go ahead and get this going. Um, I did want to make a note because last stream we were talking a lot about Agent or uh, Doctor Campbell from the FBC and the events surrounding all the nursery rhymes and how they seem to relate to um, Saga and Logan's relationship and her death. And we were making the assertion that Alan never mentioned Logan at all in the manuscripts. And I actually did find two bits of information in the manuscripts. There's only two mentions to Logan the entire time in Alan, so I just wanted to correct the record. So there's one here where it says what the Koskalis had said about her living in Watery with Logan unsettled her. For the horror story to involve her was one thing, but involving her daughter was crossing a line. So there's that. And then on the next page, one of the Taken randomly scream out, you let Logan drown before she's attacked. But those are the only two times throughout this that we actually Alan mentions her daughter specifically other than that um, there's no other details about the description of what happened or anything along those lines so for all of us theory crafting about a, uh, Dr. Campbell I did want to at least set the record straight that that Logan was mentioned by Alan at one point but anyways guys are y'all ready um, I am going to go ahead Let's see what we got here. This should be good for now. And then we'll go ahead and change our gear once we get down to the lake. Ready to go? Yes, they're both typewritten, but either way, that'd be Alan A writing it, not Alan B writing it, Max. So regardless, it's it's still him. Let's go. I wish we had more slate save slots now. <laughs> I'm ready to head to Cauldron Lake now. Let's get the plan started. Okay, here we go. We'll be there for you. What do you need from us? I'll head to Cauldron Lake with the clicker. Scratch, we'll try to get you, Anderson. You'll need backup. I can tell there's no talking you out of coming, Casey. Estevez, is there a way to get that light array to the lake? Oh, I've got you covered, so good news there. And we'll bring our mobile containment unit. It's specially built for entities like Scratch. Probably this lined with Black Rock or something. What's the plan for that? I'll make some calls on the way. Just meet me at Cauldron Lake. So, Jamie D, I think there's a little misconception. Like, just because she's an Anderson does not mean that she's immune from everything that happens in the story. I mean, technically speaking, Saga's an Anderson, and the story still happens to her. It's just her memories are not overwritten by it. They hey, can Alex, see through the plot. It'll be easier on you to ride with us. We'll have waterfront parking. I like the sound of that. So the plot still happens, and they're involved in it, but they can see the story that it's all it is. It's fiction. Speaking of which, I did do have a uh, thing I wanted to add in regarding our definition of fiction that we were talking about last stream, too. Yeah. And it seems more like fiction is more of a temporary state rather than the entire sum total of a character. So you can become fiction briefly if you're playing the role of something else, and the second the role ends and you're back to you being yourself, you stop being fiction. Much better than so me. I think we're gonna have to add that contextual difference here. Tor, I need the old gods of Asgard. I need a very special song. Hell yeah! The tour bus is already loaded, and we've said our goodbyes! Ready to hit the road, just like the old times, baby. You saw this coming, huh? Of course. I need a song about Alan Wake, about bringing him out of the dark place. A writer, a lake of darkness, bringing him into the light. <laughs> it writes itself. I hope they've still got it. Oh, they've got it. The old gods always bring the goods. So the thing is, Odinator knew that this was coming, so they already had everything prepped and ready to go. Again, profits. After getting his hands on the FBC files, Ilmo Koskalan knew what he was up against. He masterminded the cult, his and Yako's army, to fight the fucked up horror lurking under the lake, and a plan to keep those feds in their bunker by the lake in the dark. 
Outsiders would only screw things up. The Koskalas sabotaged the FPC's monitoring station and rigged it to alert them when something was brewing at the lake. One time months later, when the alarm rang, they drove to the lake again, ready for a fight. But this time, they didn't find any monsters. Something else washed ashore. The light switch. They'd read how Wake had stopped Jagger with it in the stolen files. From that point on, whenever the cult caught someone taken over by the shadow, they cut out the monster's heart, pushed the switch into the hole, and flicked it. Well, I think moral of the story is the FBC should stop effing with uh, things they don't understand to begin with. So this is the gentleman who um, was in jail at the beginning of the game, got busted out, but at the same time, he's been woken up in the middle of the night by the TV flipping on and off with no explanation of what's going on. Again, example of Night Springs, in my opinion. I'm running out of time. Alrighty. Let's do this. Alrighty, so we're gonna have to go around this route, and from what I understand, we will see the uh, manuscript page. It says after the bridge, before you jump down, so I'm presuming it's gonna be right around here. But, let's go ahead and move on. You guys ready for a banger? Because we're about to get a banger. All I gotta say on that is the FBC 100% messes with things. I mean, everything related to Dylan Faden, everything related to the slide projector, everything. It's lots of stuff. We're incoming with the lights, Anderson. Where do you want them? Set them up on the shore. We need to be ready if Scratch shows up. We'll be ready. That's the best out. Hey there, Torn. Thank you so much for the donation, buddy. I very much appreciate it. Thank you for your videos. I've been obsessed with the RCU since 2013, so your work has intrigued me. The Archivist series is just the chef's kiss. Oh, thank you. So I'm actually uh, working, recording the um, some of the dialogue for the next Archivist. It's going to be one of those ones that are like a side story, and then we're getting back to the actual altered items. There it is. So I think we're going to have to... Actually, take these guys out. I don't think I want to risk it. Actually, maybe I can just run. Goodbye. Both just prowling in the woods. Oh, no. That must be torn out. Maybe I should check in. No, you bring my arrows back to me. You. I'm driving with one hand. I need you to meet me at the shore. Is the song ready? Almost. Odin's got a killer chorus. Come to save your soul. Awake new and whole. By name I will summon him. Da 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 da
It's a dark ocean, sir. <laughs> See, I would have let that guy live, but he took one of my arrows with him. So, that's why he had to die. You don't steal my arrows. Okay. Supposedly, that was right there. Oh, no. The only reason I came back, Karzara, is because he took one of my arrows. Okay, it says when you go over before you jump down... When you go over the bridge before you jump down. Hmm. I don't see it on the sheet here. Hold on. I just want to make sure I have some things. I don't want to miss this. Dark Poem 1. So yeah, we're still in the new game. Does anyone know a different bridge, Max? Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure I don't miss this entirely, because it's... If we don't get it now, we're not going to get it. And I can still get up there, which is good. Hey, there's my boys! I have never tried to off-road like this, but... Sounds dangerous. Drive carefully, Grandpa. Pedal to the metal, bro. Metal to the pedal. Yeah. <laughs> and there's the door. Very rock and roll way to drive. So maybe somewhere around here? Or maybe here. There's there's a bridge right there. Maybe it's that bridge. Before you jump down the leg. Okay. I'm just nervous, because once I find it the first time, I'll know forever moving forward. But the first time, I'm just anxious I will miss something. This is one of the little speedy boys. Oh, you shit. Let's try to run. I need to get a heal out right now. You wanted to know what art we would use? Well, that's them. I'll be there soon. That is them, and you better take good care of them until I get there. Well, original type, the reason why is because this is a unique manuscript for New Game Plus. It's not something we already got. At least the ones in the lighthouse are manuscripts we already received. This one is not something we've ever seen before. Which is why I'm more focused on it. One, two. One, two. How you feeling tonight, Cauldron? <laughs> Whoa, what just happened? <laughs> and now we have one of those crazy ladies. And we're out of arrows, basically, which is not good. I am not happy about that. I'm just going to ignore her. Yeah, she can just stay there and stay in timeout against the tree. Fine with me. Gonna need more reverb. I'm getting no bounce out here. There we go. That's the page I wanted. Hey, where are my chimes? I threw them out. Chimes are not rock and roll. Yeah, they are. If you know how to use them. It's not a lake. 
Here we go. The surface of the lake was a black mirror. The upside down reflection identical yet darker. A window into a darker world than ours. A doorway. A hush so profound it rang like a scream. As if the last echo of the terror had just died. Inside the steep cliffs of the caldera, everything echoed. An echo chamber. Hmm. Like a fractured skull. Okay. A shadow fell on Cauldron Interesting Lake. Imagery. Something of impossible scale loomed over it, blocking the sky. Ati, the janitor, leaned close. Took a hold of the rim of the crater. Lifted up his janitor's bucket. The water sloshed. Swirled inside like a vortex. Gently humming a tango, he poured the water on the attic floor. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Shadow fell in Caldera. Something of impossible scale loomed over, blocking the sky. Ati. The janitor leaned close, took a hold of the rim of the crater, lifted up his janitor's bucket. So they're referring to Cauldron Lake as the janitor's bucket. The water sloshed, swirling, gently humming a tango. He poured the water on the attic floor. So we get fractal patterns. Okay. I mean, there is this uh, scene with uh, Director Trench at the end of Control during uh, Jesse's his dream, where they refer to him as the old god who um, put a fish down the drain to keep something from backing up into the house. No, that's not what they're saying, Amelia. They're not saying Ati's bucket is an altered item. They're referring to just a symbolic comparison. You got a new PC, Jack? Nice, dude. But... They're definitely leaning into Ati being of godlike, or at least possessing the characteristics of a godlike entity. Interesting. Let's just keep that in the back of our head and play some metal. That didn't come from a document, Amelia. That was just Trench ranting. He's uh, going on about how he met a uh, someone who could have been an old god. And about how there was something climbing up from the drain down from below. And in order to stop it, the janitor put a fish inside to We're keep from backing when you up. Are. Hey! I'm here! I'm here. Let's get ready. Yeah, the attic refers to the writers room 100%. Up here overlooking the area. Anderson, I can drop more gear down for you if you're running low. I'll use the lights to hit the Taken when they come. Light them up for you. Bad news is we were in a hurry. The power supply is spotty. Your partner here will try to keep it running. But I, I'm not a damn mechanic. Mm. I wish your tech guy was here, Karen. Already bickering, isn't that cute? So I'm curious. Yeah, 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 I'll get to you guys in a second. So I'm wondering if Ati legitimately had a bucket full of cauldron lake water and then tossed it into the attic and created some kind of link. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. Alrighty, so. Now for the fun part, getting our Just loadout like ready to go. Time, right, bro. Fighting the forces of darkness with heavy metal. All right, let's see how we want to set this up. So I do want more of these rocket flares, 100%. I do not need this larger med kit. Actually, hold on. Let's go ahead and use one of these to max Get out real quick. We're ready to rock and roll. Just say when. I know, guys. Chill out. <laughs> I'm trying to get my loadout ready to go. Okay, so I need all of the pistol ammo. I need all of the shotgun we'll play ammo. play this at maximum volume. And 
and some more rifle ammo. Okay, so we've got you, you, and you. I'm going to take one of these mugs out of here. I'm going to try to keep some of the mugs, because if I accidentally use one, I can pop a flare and then equip another one so we have a second full heal. Um, grenades. I don't know if we have any more grenades. I don't have any more flares, which is going to be shite. I'm not going to put more um, arrows in because the reload animation is so long and it makes me stand still. It leaves me kind of vulnerable, so I'm not going to mess with that. Let me grab more of the pain pills. I'm not going to use the propane tanks, even though, like, they're kind of awesome. Maybe I should... Or just take more rocket flares. You know what? Let's move this one, because, again, I'm not going to be able to reload that. Because this does do great AoE damage. Alright, so we got you, 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 rocket flares. I don't have a lot more past that. I've only got four of those heals. I'm trying to think. I know the propane takes forever, but it does do amazing AoE damage. But I'm wondering if I want to take more heals than this. Yeah, let's let's take more heals instead of the propane. Okay, and we can get rid of the Mare Setter charm because we don't need him anymore, unfortunately. Sorry, Mare Setter. But, okay, um, increases damage dealt when low on health. Increases hand flare duration. Actually, I think that's going to be the best. Duration and area of effect, that'll be the best thing for this fight. Hey there, Ty. Dude, thank you so much for the donation, buddy. Oh my god, you were very, very generous. Thank you. Uh, wait, does Ati mop up the excess energies from the oldest house and then dump them in a cauldron lake when he goes on vacation? I'm probably totally off base, but is that that's the way your brain goes? I have no idea. You know, that actually might be a good point to just not even use the crossbow whatsoever. Because that opens up three slots we can use for other things. Like, I'm going to get two very good shots out, but that's the long and short of it. Like, I can basically get two free kills, but that's about it. Yeah, I think this is going to probably be better right here. And let's move you up to the top and you down to the bottom, only because when you go to switch it, you start off at the top here. So let's move it like that, because the second you hit triangle, you're already there, and I can immediately just... It's the fastest way with the least amount of button inputs. Hey there, PDX, dude. Thank you so much for the donation, buddy. Happy holidays, Dean. Yeah, you as well. Thanks for streaming today. Pump for the finale with you and Chad. All right, let's get going. All righties. Um, I don't know if there's a save. Is there a coffee thermos here so that I can save real quick? I don't know if there is or not. It does not seem like it. Alrighties. Let's do this. I'm nervous, but we're going to get at this going. Fingers crossed. Grandpa, you signal me when the song is done, and I'll use the clicker to bring Wake back. Hit it! Hello, Cauldron Wake! Great to see so many federal agents here tonight. Prepare to experience a soul-searing, mind-frying act of black magic and sorcery! This song goes out to our favorite tortured writer. Let these sweet tunes guide you out of the darkness. It's called Dark Ocean Summoning. Ah! <laughs> Hey, you're 
making me look bad in front of Saga, bro. <laughs> uh, Thank you, Robin, for keeping the death. Tracking the deaths on this. <sighs> All right, guys, throw up your horns. Let's do this. Dude, if they had a t-shirt for the Dark Ocean something called from Lake 2023, in I would buy them. 100%. I'll get him into the light. It feels like ammo reloading is going to be the biggest issue with this. Anderson, heads up. Shite. More taken on the way. Come on. Oh my lord. Come on, reload, 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 reload. It's not reloading. There we go. Oh my lord. I don't have I don't have um the uh I don't have the flares on shortcuts. This is bad. I do not have that on shortcut. There we go. We're good. Okay, we're good. Turns of the night. They're coming. I can't see them. Come on, aim, 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 aim. That's bad. Oh my god, grab it, heal. There we go, okay. Got a delivery for you, Anderson. Anderson, trouble on the way. I have him in the light. <laughs> My bad. That was bad. And Tor Lightning Bolt now. There you go. Alright, we got it! Woo!
Got a first try. Yeah! Lots of running around in circles. <laughs> but we made it. Here's the power of rock and roll. What happened? Why didn't it work? I did everything right. Art to bring it back? Clicker to make it real? So where the fuck is he? And I'm still pissed about the only one death I had, Jack, because I disagree with that death. I had no ammo, or I had no flashlight charges, no ammo, because it only gave you one and two shotgun shells. And then I got oh, stuck on geometry. <laughs> it was back. Let's do this. Time for going from the highs of the dark ocean something to the lows of what we're I'd about been to walk here into. Many times before, I didn't know how many. This felt different, like my last chance. If it wasn't already too late. Hundred percent AM on a Gatari is like you can only say there's time travel in the sense that you're standing in reality looking at reality. But within the dark place, the concept of time travel is kind of meaningless. Nobody lived here anymore. Was I too late? <laughs> Scratch was in there, writing his horror story. There was still time to stop him. I needed to get inside. And they're already packing everything up here. Now this, I did miss because I was rushing it um, through my first time through this. But this is Blessed Logistics and Transit. The Blessed Organization had a subsidiary that came and packaged up all of Alice's things. That is a whole... There's a whole line of why and what based upon that. The Blessed Organization seems to have Alice's belongings. And considering what we are, we know we're about to find upon seeing this, there's a reason for it, and it's even more disconcerting. No, 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 Amelia. This has nothing to do with Alice doing anything strange. This is after what we're about to see happens. Meaning that Blessed Organization was called in to package up her things and take it away from the property. I mean, like, I used to work on Ario uh, Renovations, where if, um... We have a vacant home and the stuff's still in the house. We would get called in to go in there and do a trash out. This is basically a trash out being done in Alice's apartment, and it's the blessed organization that did it. I... The blessed boxes were not there originally. If you look at the previous two times we came here, it was just conventional boxes, not the ones labeled blessed. Alice did not work with them. It won't end. Like a nightmare I can't wake up from. I thought I could contain Ellen in my photos, but... I can't. The monster just keeps coming back. Every night. Like waves hitting the shore. I'm... 
I'm so tired. He's here all the time. There's so much rage inside of him, I can't stand it anymore. God, I tried so hard. I can't. I can't. made a decision. Most of you won't understand. People call me an artist. But I don't care about any of that. I just wanted to show the world what I see. I can't keep going like I have been. It's time for a perspective shift. To go from photographer to subject. From artist to art. Dead. Scratch tortured her until she couldn't stand it anymore. Welcome, Alan C. And all that time, or Alan D, I should say. thought it was me. Scratch was still here. No, this is C. He hadn't escaped the dark place yet. He was scratching my edits out of return. <laughs> He did not hesitate because Thomas Zane gaslit him into just going ahead and doing it I without had seen thinking. This before. This was not Scratch. This was me. Caught in a loop. I had stopped myself trying to fix the manuscript. I was the one haunting Alice. It was always me. I killed her. So in our version, Alan A is the one who wrote a uh, return with Thomas Zane. Alan B is the one who was editing it, who just got shot. Alan C is this guy right here. And D, I think we were having that as the one who calls from the future, if that is in fact Alan. This is the ritual to lead you on. Your friends will meet him when you're gone. Just the cover page left behind. Write out the timeline of Alan's? Oh dear, that will be an undertaking in of itself. Merry Christmas, everybody! <laughs> You're getting this game tomorrow? Nice. You enjoy. Do you think Saga Anderson could solve the Death Note case? I mean, she kind of probably would do it easily because she could just peer into the uh, main guy's mind through profiling and just immediately know who it is. Ooh. 
Well, Amelia, the sacrifice that they're doing is more so they can save people. If they let everyone stay in the state they were, then I don't think they would need it as much. But it's a horror story. You have to have some form of sacrifice. Mateo, I like... Or Mateo, I can't really say much on Zane. Too many theories. Yeah, this is when Scratch actually comes to existence. You're correct, I, uh, Monogatari. You're not sure if Saga could profile Light without knowing him? Who knows? What are you looking at? Yeah, because the thing is with, like, Saga as a detective, it's less to do with her detective skills, but more to do with her precognition and her para-utilitarian abilities is really what makes her a good detective. Like, if we stripped all that away from her, I would, I would enjoy seeing what she's like if she didn't have the power of a seer, but anyways... Hey there, Fuzzy! Thank you so much for the donation. You were amazing, thank you. I'm getting off this time, I promise, but it loops forever. Merry Christmas, Zine. <laughs> hey, Merry Christmas. Hey, you got it, sir. Yes, so the Kareen, yes, yeah, so the Alan who gets out is the one that has Scratch within him. Now, we don't know how much time takes place between this point and when he is pulled out of the dart of the ocean. I mean, it's entirely possible that as soon as he gets taken here is when he appears on the beach. Because this is when the Dark Ocean something happened in a relative time to the Dark Place, so who knows? Would Alan be a successful writer without his clairvoyance? No idea, Prusiak. Because all of his narrative ideas come from his uh, connection to his dreams and, by extension, the dark place. So just to read this off, Sam Blake said in an interview that having to stick to one genre is a weakness of Alan. We are not meant to see that as an ultimate truth, more of a limitation by him. Yeah, and um, Mr. Gore says something similar, that Alan's making it more complicated for himself. I'm paraphrasing, basically making it more complicated for himself because of how he writes everything in his conflict and spirals and all that fun stuff. That it's not a necessity whatsoever, it's just how he does it. And what the sad thing is, is Monogatari, is that there's an interview with Alan Wake on a late night talk show where he mentions that he isn't, that he doesn't want to be stuck to genre, which is why he changed from crime novels to something else. As long as there's a good narrative and there's a good theming, and the genre really doesn't matter. And then now he's stuck to that. What do you think the significance of the live action is? I mean, it's just something Remedy does. I don't think there's much more significance past that. No, Alan and Saga do not have the same uh, classification of ability. Alrighties, let's get going. And out, let's call Alan D the one that gets out of the lake. Heading back. Right, yeah, see, right there. Right there is when he vanishes and Wake boom. back from the dark place. Yep. With a song and the clicker. But he didn't end up here now. He landed on the shore after I faced Nightingale in the overlap. So, to answer your question, Zavos, uh, okay. Alan was considered in the Prime Candidate program. I don't know how detailed that got, though. 
They do mention him in relation to the prime candidates, but Are you okay? we don't know more no, than that. It's my fault. They got out with my face scratch. That night I found Wake here. He appeared because of this. The summoning. That was Wake. Scratch wasn't pretending to be Wake. They're the same person. Bitch. He's here! Scratch! Watch out, Anderson! Estevez, Scratch is Wake with the dark presence inside him. He wants the clicker. Here we Change go. Plan. I'll lure him to the cell. When we're inside, lock it and blast it with all you got. Anderson, pin him down with gunfire for me to get the light on him. Come on it. Oh, come on it. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Get away from me. Back. Okay, I'm not going to get a lot of this done. Power is out. He's coming for you. Okay, I get it off. Get off, get off, get off, get off, get off. Move. I need to reload, like, bad. Fire! You picked a family to mess with, devil. Okay, we're back. Okay, let's get some more done. What? I can trap him with the light if you I do not down. know what just hit me. Oh, shite! Trying my best here. I need a heal though. Come on. Got it. Okay, good. Need to get the other one to try myself as well. Make us proud, Saga! Check our down, devil. We're ready to roll now. Okay. Let's go find the next one. Reload, reload, reload. And that's gonna do absolutely nothing. Okay. Got it. Perfect. 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 Okay. Good enough for me. and the deer sails on. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, folks, but it's official. Deer Fest is canceled. Today, Bright Falls feels a little less bright. And 
Alice catches the switch. <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to vibe. 100%, we're going to vibe this entire song. Throw up the horns, let's go. Sure, original cycle, pay attention to uh, Odin's Garb. Yeah! <laughs> so, Piero, I've heard the similar, um, let me turn the music down a little bit. I heard the similar theory regarding Max Payne. Now, there is no evidence in-game for any of this. I think the reason people believe that is because of some uh, UFO Easter eggs in the Grand Theft Auto series, and because Rockstar worked on both, therefore they made that hypothesis. So there's nothing really to support it other than conjecture. That being said, uh, in Crossfire X, there is an alien that had green blood at the very end of the post credit scene. So th I think that would be more of a basis, but there's no... Crossfire X doesn't take place in this universe either, so it's not really going to be helpful. Alright, music go back up. And I would say no, Monosax is not in his only in his head, uh, a la Fight Club, is because other characters react to her presence. The horror story falls to claim Name and you serve and the Dude, if David Lynch directed the Alan Wake TV show, I would lose my shit. Yeah, Fallen Angels is also an episode of X Files, is correct. Once more the oceans are Right here. A land awake. You're saying Alan Wake right there. It's very important to note. Because the entire series, they, the old gods referred to Alan as Tom, but here, when they're said you need to call him back, they don't call him Tom, they call him Alan Wake in this song. So they know the difference. The reason behind them calling him Tom still isn't known. Known, I should say. No, I didn't skip um, the last of this road. I, I played the whole thing, Max, and I will be letting you guys everyone listen to the full song here. See, Hero, something along those lines is it's a it's a hypothesis with nothing actually in-game to support it. Now, you can make up a fan fiction about that and say, oh yeah, this would explain everything, but there's nothing in lore to suggest that in the first place. You need to have a foundation to build a hypothesis upon, and there's no foundation. You just have the building with no concrete underneath it. If that makes, if you follow my um, construction jargon. Yeah, wake new and whole. A wake new and whole. Yep, same thing. So is Scratch a separate part of the Dark Brothers? No, it's just interchangeable. I mean, Alan in this game even says that the Dark Brothers and Scratch are interchangeable. He just refers to his doppelganger as Scratch when he's taken over by the Dark Brothers. The other side of the moonlight. Oh, I thought the song was over. Sorry, guys. I got my horns up right now. I'm head banging as much as I can right now. Okay, so for anyone who doesn't know, when I was going through high school, my first couple years of college, I had super long hair just for head banging. 
and I do not have long hair anymore, so I cannot headbang like I used to. <laughs> I have no idea if Tor and Odin have Galahorn because there's no nothing in the game to suggest or even mention that. Well, in, in Leo, in the Herald of Darkness, when they're saying that Alan's darkness held Alice hostage, it's because of all of his negative emotions and everything like that. It's not like the Lovecraftian darkness held her hostage. It's more his personality and his uh, substance abuse and other things like that is what held her ho is held her hostage. It's more of a metaphorical aspect. But there's also the secondary tier of that, which is the dark place held her hostage. Well, so it's, it's there's a multitude to it. I was a fourth member of the old gods. Oh, you're calling me Loki then? Is is that uh, now uh, more for Gaming University that I'm secretly Loki and I never told anyone? Because I'm down for this. Fourth member of the old gods. Whoa. Whoa. The music just went out. Music just went out. What happened? I just lost all sound from the game. What the hell? What just happened? Hold on. What, what just, like, literally, I have no audio on my end. This happened to you too, Sandwich? Aw, oh, dude, that sucks. It's a bug from New Game Plus? Bro. Alright, let's just continue onwards and see what happens. Yeah, it's just a bug. Tom, we need to get to our next gig. We're doing this for you and our lovely saga. You take care of things on this side. Don't screw it up, Tom! I'd seen it all play out. Like a horror movie I'd been forced to watch. The Dark Presence held all the cards now. Okay, so he has his Neo-looking trench coat from Matrix. Alright. Let me go ahead and... Pull the music up a little bit. What's the question, Isaac? <laughs> yes, I did get the um, other manuscript regarding Ati. I did find that. Welcome back, Wake. You are awake now, right? With the shadow out of you? Some good news, at least. Bad news is, I haven't seen a situation this fucked since the AWE in Eagle River. The Shadow's now in Alex, and Anderson is gone. We need to figure out how to salvage this. I'll do anything it takes to fix this, Agent Estevez. I'm the reason this is all happening. It's never that simple. But I should have put you in a box and shipped you off to a containment facility the second I laid eyes on you. The only question now is, are you able to fix this? I can try. Not the most encouraging answer, but we'll make it work. Scratch. The dark presence inside Casey. It threw Saga into the lake. If she ends up in the dark place, she could be there forever. It took me 13 years to get out. Zane never did. Tor and Odin went in after her, right? Maybe they'll get her out. With the power of rock and roll. I saw them when I was trapped there. They performed in my musical. I'm immediately less optimistic about this. 
Um, so she does, yeah, original Tyke, she does mention an Eagle River AWE. No, we have never got any information about what that is. So I know, I know a lot of people are trying to say, oh, it's the Eagle Limited AWE, the one with the train. No, completely different situation. It's physically in a different geographic place. So Eagle River, I believe, is even in a different state than the, um, what happened with Eagle Limited. What's the situation? I've never seen an entity break a bureau containment unit like that. And now the Dark Presence is occupying Agent Casey? When it attacked him in the woods, it must have been preparing for this. And now he is the Clicker. Scratch will go to Bright Falls and use the Clicker to bring about the horrific ending he wrote for Return. But I can still fix this. How? Scratch must have the manuscript. If I can read the ending, I can rewrite it. I need to go after him. Well, you won't get very far without these. This plan is a real Hail Mary wake. I wish I could help, but this is all on you. I got you every kind of weapon we have available. Don't fuck it up. All right, you just chill down here with your messed up leg. So I, I needed a car. So the FBI vehicle would be at the parking lot. All right, I want to take a look at this. I'm trying to see if there's black rock lining on this. It does not appear so. But it's possible that they infuse black rock into the beams here. Who knows? Yeah, Teflon Billy. It's, it sucks that they have so many... That the... Specifically the crossbow... Colt stash is completely bugged the hell out. Okay, so we got you, 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 you. Do we have anything else? We do not as of right now. <sighs> Alright, here we go. Well, it's not that Black Rock would affect the Dark Presence. It's just that Black Rock is intended to stop certain paranormal things from crossing over its barriers. They call it paranatural lead. But also, it may only be able to block... Uh, it's it specified in one of the documents about Black Rock that it can only stop things of a specific uh, range of resonance. I was awake again. And I don't clear for think the, first the Dark Presence falls under that category. Like time. I was back exactly where I left. A dark forest outside Bright Falls. A gun in one hand, a flashlight in the other. Haunted by my own writing. Alice taken from me. I knew what I had to do. Stop the horror story from coming true. Stop the dark presence. Because, yeah, the FPC, after they got... Con the oldest house got connected with the um, Black Rock Quarry threshold. They were able to start mining it and started incorporating it into the architecture of the oldest house for the purpose of containing things. Hi there. We have nothing there. And goodbye. Crap. Crap. I went the wrong direction. Damn it. Oh, shit. God, they're everywhere. This is not good. I'm out of ammo. Too late. Okay, let's go ahead and reload. All 
All right. So did I like miss the path or something? I did. Instead of turning, I should have just turned left because that's the path that would have taken me away from the mall. Never mind. My bad. My bad entirely. Let's go ahead and reload. All right, so we have a lot more flare gun ammo, which is 100% good, which means that's all I'm gonna be using for a while. All right, so what I did this uh, the second time, because the first time I did this scenario with the picnic benches is I died very quickly. Oh my God, no, are you serious? Hit it. It's missing entirely! What the fuck? I can't see anything that's happening right now. I can't see anything! What is happening right now? I am dead. Oh my god, shoot the freaking flashlight. This is not good. That was very clunky. I couldn't remember what had happened, but I could feel it getting stronger, waking up. I thought it was haunting me, closing in. It was inside me the whole time, and then it took over. It turned me into scratch. Well, the thing is, that scenario normally isn't difficult. It's just, for some reason, the flare did not hit the uh, shadows. Because normally what I'll do is I'll just walk up, destroy them, and just keep running. I don't stop to even fight those guys. Because once you get past that, they're all funneled up in a small area. You can wipe them all out with a single flare. But it didn't work that way for me this time, apparently. Somehow. All right, let's, let's get out of this forest. Granted, I survived, so that's all that matters. I had to get to Bright Falls. See this through to the end. Maybe I'm just so spoiled on the first game, because in the original game, you shoot a flare at it, and it takes care of those things. This game, it seems to just go straight through them. brought Saga Anderson into this story to help me escape. She succeeded. It cost her everything. I'd used Alex Casey in my writing for years. The real Casey had been drawn here because of that. Now he was a victim too. Saga, Casey, Alice, all this horror originates from me. It's my fault. Scratch had to be stopped. I've driven down this road before. Been driving on it forever. had brought the dark place here this would take me back inside in 2010 I had dived in a leap of faith for Alice with no idea that the cost would be a nightmare worse than death it had taken me 13 years to get out now Alice was dead because of me and I was going to make that leap again, this time knowing the cost all too well. Another way to look at it? I had brought 
the dark place here with me. I never had gotten out. Maybe after this I finally could. It was a fool's hope. I had no choice. I had to do it. That didn't make me any less terrified. Fuck it. This is probably the hardest thing he's ever had to do. Is re-enter that nightmare after he did succeed in getting out. Willingly. Knowing what it's gonna do to him. You would have gone to McDonald's first. <laughs> Go get yourself a burger and then come back. All right. This is not what I expected. And now he's in a suit, by the way. And for me, everyone, this right here is probably one of the most disturbing parts of the game for me. Weirdly enough. Weirdly enough, this is the most disturbing part of the game for me. Because in this, Alan essentially has to confront one of his, one of the aspects he has in the back of his head. That is what any artist truly craves at the end of the day. To be appreciated and revered for their work. The problem is, this is taken to the extreme here to the point of absurdity. Where literally anything, everything he does is worshipped. Even down to the point where he could write something about like, Oh, little Johnny went down to the supermarket to buy himself a, some eggs. And boom! These people would treat it as if it's the most brilliant literary piece of literature ever written. It's kind of disgusting. But, by confronting and witnessing this firsthand there is the assimilation because there's the confrontation of the shadow but there's also the integration of the shadow which is what we're experiencing here it could be argued that alan's entire story his multi-arc story has been about him confronting different aspects of his shadow and integrating them into his conscious reality and this is just the latest in the long line of them Wake deftly tricks the reader into believing the cult of the tree is the story's antagonist. Thrilling, moody, and captivating. Yes, we're playing on PS5. Oh, 100%. If they released this on Steam, it would blow up, absolutely. I mean, Epic does have limited um, rights to it right the now, but I think it might go to the platform point soon view. enough. A confident move by a veteran author. And the, the kind of disturbing... Return shines a light on its author's brilliantly dark mind. Deerfest scene is a strong contender for the most memorable ending in literature. Because let's be honest, has, has anyone ever made a creative project and wanted to hear Alan Wake's the praise? Novel return is breaking every literary record in existence. In existence. It's the great American novel. But then you hear stuff like this, and you're just like, this doesn't ring real. This isn't the type of praise that seems legitimate. Among the scares, humor glows in Wake's pages. Uh, the cult's symbol and name resulting from a mushroom trip is evidence that Wake is winking at the reader. This It's just disgusting to listen to. I mean, when you overly praise something, it just doesn't feel real anymore. And the thing that's truly disturbing about this whole scene is we like to point out, it's like, oh, this is Alan just being egotistical. No, I'm going to say 
any artist wants to hear something like this deep down in the back of their heads. But not to the point where it becomes worshipped like a god. And you come to the realization, or at least Alan is forced to, that it really doesn't matter. But if we're truly honest, if we were in a place like this, every one of us would have a scene like this. It might not be about the worship or the... Uh, that Alan does at this point, but every one of us has a dark, twisted version of this. Again, Herald of Light, or a Herald of Darkness, Champion of Light, and all that. It's rejecting that you even possess it, which is the difficult, is the hard thing. It's the rejection of the shadow. It's time for Koskala Brothers. Book Hello, I'm Ilma Koskala, and welcome to the Koskala Brothers Book Club. This week, we will review the highly anticipated new novel by Alan Wake, Return. Return is printed on a firm, high-quality white offset, uncoated paper stock, making every page a true delight to turn in your fingertips. Alan Wake's brilliance is on full display with his choice of a hardcover book jacket made of a premium enamel stock with gloss lamination that is both tasteful and pleasant to the touch. Isn't that right? Wake set a high standard with his previous novels, but I can say without hesitation that Return contains the best and most compelling book description on a back cover that I have ever read. This book blurb is truly riveting and will keep you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. It is accompanied by a tasteful photograph of Alan Wake's home here in Bright Falls. The book weighs one pound and three ounces. Return is a true masterpiece. I'll give it a perfect score of five Alma beers out of five. How about you? Yeah, this is just... There you have it. Alan Wake has done it again. This was the Goskola Brothers Book Club. Cheers. And, yep. White Pyramid, by the way, upright. Now... A little thing I wanted to point out in that is they refer to this as a photo of Alan's home here in Bright Falls. Except they show an image of Thomas Zane's home here in Bright Falls. Again, getting to the point where I feel like Tom is trying to overtake Alan's existence. Again, this whole thing here is literally just them talking about the paper and the book itself. This is the degree of worship that's here. And no, this all is false. Even though the characters seem genuine, it only sounds like this because it was written that it was like this and the clicker made it so. No, Amelia. This is not real. I mean, technically right now it is real, but it's this is not reality reality. This is overwritten reality. I needed to get a copy of Return. I needed to read the ending to have a shot at changing it. And if I we're... was inside Scratch's ending. A perverse version of reality. The townspeople brainwashed. Everyone and everything revolved around Return. As if it had just been published. You said there's stuff in the jukebox? Okay, I'll go take a look. I mean, like, I've seen these before... Old Gods of Asgard, Take Control. No, that's part of the original one. I can't read all of this. The Poet and the Muse. Yeah, that's already been released. Pretty much everything in the jukebox is uh, Old God songs from previous games. So, one of the the first steps, and like just to get a little bit of uh, alchemy here, let's talk about the alchemical process, is calcination is the first step in a lot of these, and it's the point where it's represented by fire, and it's when you burn away the ego and the true 
nature is laid bare to you when you look at the ashes. And a lot of what we're seeing here is the recognition of that. And then what you do is you go through the separation phase where you divide the positive from the negative and then you re-ferment it back into your conscious personality. But in order to do that, you have to destroy the ego. And that's one aspect of this. Destroy your... And ego is not as in like narcissistic ego. I'm talking about your perception of who you are as a person. It has to be shattered. Everything you accept about yourself and everything you accept about the world has to be shattered for this process to begin. And it's not a fun experience. A spell binding tour de force. And he stopped talking. <laughs> the world and characters echo each other in unique and surprising ways. The overlap scenes in particular are rich examples of this theme. Hey there, Pat. The book continually subverts expectations. <laughs> See, I expected the Koskulas to become taken because of their similarities to the Huatari brothers. <laughs> yeah, we get it. The novel begins as a murder mystery, but pulls the rug out from under and turns into an all-out supernatural horror. And maybe this is more disturbing for me, because... Hold on. Why no love for Barry? Right? Is our dear author planning something for the future? Hmm? Control 2. Oh, whatever it is, I'm on board. You know, I'm with you on this 100%. It's because me personally, um... I have a hard time reading... Like, in when I'm in person... I have, I get really Wait, awkward when I hear praise. Into believing a cult of the tree is the story's antagonist. Like I don't know how to respond to it. It makes in some ways it makes me uncomfortable. Return is an early contender for a Pulitzer Prize. Saga and Casey will go down as literature's best law enforcement duo. <laughs> the salt shaker story had me rolling on the floor. So whenever I hear this, where it's nothing but praise coming my way, or Alan's way, it's just like, ugh, oh, it makes me very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I hate compliments. Like, like, the thing is, you want to hear, it's the weird thing where you want to hear them, let's be real, we all want the compliment, but we don't know how to respond to it. Or at least I don't, I just... Can we like thank you and go on? Oh, by the way, I heard someone make the comment that these two right here are supposed to be Yako's children. Because remember, on the uh, computer, we had a scene where they had the two children who were part of their um, commercial and they were looking for payment. I heard someone's. I think Clay Murphy confirmed that these two are Yako's children. You're a raging narcissist. You're a raging narcissist, so you just soak it up. Hey, some people are more comfortable with it, but. <laughs> the tragedy of Saga losing her family is a blatant commentary on a woman's struggle to balance her personal and professional lives. Charlie and Charlene Koskula, yeah. You asked Clan Twitter. Okay, gotcha, Monogatari. It's cool that he answered, though. Setting the trilogy's exciting conclusion at Deerfest oh, makes return a genre-bending mixture of fact and fiction. The gut-wrenching ending in which Saga is left to die in the lake is modern horror at its finest. And that's what epilogues are for. The stage fight scene in Departure is one upped by the absolutely mind frying Dark Ocean Summoning. Where do I sign up to live at the Valhalla Nursing Home? Its residents are laugh out loud funny! The old gods of Asgard are back. Wake clearly knows what his fans want to see. I 
I didn't understand what was going on half the time, but I loved every word of it. We don't know what's really going on either, Norman. It's perfectly fine. Dark Ocean Summoning? Yeah, that's the name of the song that plays during the final fight there with the old gods. Norman never likes clothes at any point in time. I mean, technically speaking, we have these two guys who are also from the sauna. And they're just vibing. That's all good. So we do get confirmation that the end of Return does not have anything that moves on from here. This is supposed to be the last scene. There is not supposed to be anything that happens after this in Return. Which means that everything from here on forward happens off page. So let's go ahead and look at the back page, just to clarify what I was saying. Look at the back and see what the house looks like. I could see the round windows of the writer's room in the photo. That's Tom's That's house, to not Alan's, but they claim it's Alan's, which is, again... Sick, sick story. <laughs> further goes into the idea that Tom is trying to usurp Alan's life. Yeah, Alan has no plot armor right now. Correct. <laughs> I had the book. Nothing now. from here on forward. I could write my ending to return. He is safe. I had to get to the writer's room to stop this horror story. This was an obsessive, egocentric nightmare. All revolving around a vain monster of a writer and his final divine work of art the novel return come true it wouldn't stop here there it is it would keep spreading and this is quote unquote Alan's house at least according to the story even though the original draft said this is what Tom built when he came over here and according to other people this house never existed until the story to started the writer's room right a new conclusion was Scratch's insecure need for fame for praise drawn from my psyche I would bring his sick fantasy crashing down around him. And we also have to place a lot of this vain narcissism into context. Is Alan spent two years... Okay, let, let, we need to talk about, weirdly enough, is um, Misery by Stephen King. Because a lot of Alan's story reflects Paul Sheldon's story within that game. Spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't... Uh, Let's, I'm going to go ahead and pause here. So, spoiler alert, if anyone doesn't want to listen to what I'm saying, go ahead and mute me until I unpause the game. So, essentially, in Misery, Paul Sheldon wrote a series of romance novels about Misery Chastain, and he wanted to... He didn't feel like his work was actually worthy of artistic praise because he saw it as pulp. Kind of like how Alan sees his Alex Casey novels as not truly artistic because they're pulp novels. So they both kill off their characters, Alex Casey and Misery Chastain, for the sole purpose of moving on to a new genre to write something that they consider to be worthy of praise and worthy of an art of artistic merit. And that's when Alan goes into writer's block, because anything he does from that point moving forward, he just feels like he can't live up to his own, what he wants in his own head. And then from that point moving forward, the very beginning of the first game starts with a character of his, the Hitchhiker, telling him all of his internal negative self-talk about how he's a shitty writer about how the only there's only the only reason there's readable sentences in his book is because the editor had to go in there and change everything about he's absolutely shit about what he's trying to do and that's what alan truly believes about himself and now if we take that into context with the idea of him wanting to actually i'm going to go ahead we're not talking about uh, um stephen king anymore um with that into context he wants to be recognized on his own merits and not because he's writing pulp so this in this deep-rooted desire that's all of his anxiety is rooted in is what is made manifest with this deer fest ending and once he received it and he saw it he's like this is narcissistic and effed up it's just horrible but now that he has confronted that shadow aspect of it he can now integrate that and become a better person moving on it feels like the dark place is 
forcing Alan to go to examine every little less detail of his personality and over time integrate it all so that he become a whole person. Or I wouldn't say a whole person. He can evolve in the Jungian self into the self where you integrate the shadow. And once that's done, I don't think the dark place can really control him like it does now. It's what Alice mentioned. There's destruction and ascension, and once you integrate everything, there's the ascension phase. Well, Kareen, the uh, in the cold in the cold air street station, the lines from the hitchhiker are on the wall. So what you're seeing about the negative self talk, that's what the hitchhiker was telling him. Get to a therapist, yeah. He needs a therapist, 100%. Alice? What was that? Alice was dead. Was this a trap? Or was Scratch torturing me? We need more shitty of video game guys having to enter dark prison of their own making to better themselves. I mean, it's, it's a horrifying premise. And I think the reason why Alice is having an easier time in the dark place now is because he, she confronted all of her demons before she jumped into the lake. Or at least she confronted more of her demons before jumping into there. Her nyctophobia being the biggest aspect of it. I mean, okay, this is just me because, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm also a huge Kingdom Hearts fan. We need to send both Aqua and Alan to the same therapist because they basically live the exact same situation between the Realm of Darkness and the Dark Place. So we need to get them both into group therapy. <laughs> hey there, Andres, how you doing, buddy? Thank you so much for the donation. Um, after Alan's win against the Darkness, is it a bad idea he write a book about it? What if the Dark uses it to make reality or inspire others to find it? I don't think he's ever gonna wanna write about this. It's kinda sad. Anyways, let's get going. I've rambled on enough. Oh, no, no, no. There's no other parallels uh, for Terra and Ventus' original tag. I, I, I mean, it's just a joke that I have. I mean, even when I released a video about Alan Wake saying uh, Alan's decade in the dark, the reason why I called it that is because in Kingdom Hearts 3, one of the little Instagram hashtags uh, referring to Aqua was Decade in the Dark, so it was kind of just a little... I named the Alan Wake video as a reference to Kingdom Hearts. I'm following you, Alice. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, run. Run, run. I have to remember the pathway here. I need to listen to all that next time I play this our story. I miss a lot of dialogue there, and I'm sorry, guys. We're safe in the light, Alan. For now. But he's very pushy. Rose, right? From the diner. How are you here? <laughs> I'm here to save you, silly. I got your instructions. I found every hidden message you left for me. In the radio in the wind, in the forums on my Alan Wake fan site. What? No, Rose, I haven't been leaving you any messages. Oh, I get it. Yes, Alan, only a crazy person would think you've been leaving them secret messages. <laughs> Wink. Wink. <laughs> but now you need to get your butt upstairs, Alan. This shit won't write itself, no matter what William Shakespeare said. Right. Thank you, Rose. I'll do what I can. Well, JS Gaming, this isn't the dark place. This is reality. Kind of. 
This is reality only because the clicker rewrote everything to be the ending of Return. So this is what's really going on. But the thing is, Rose wasn't involved in the ending of Return, so she's kind of left in the same state she was at the end of last time she was mentioned on page. Just doing my part. I love her. Can we all just agree that Rose is best, best girl? Can we all just agree on that? Upstairs. The writer's room must be in the attic. That's where the windows were. And we're locked off. You really want to see Rose and Casey interact? You need it? Oh my god, that would be pure comedy gold. His straight-laced and her manic insanity would just be beautiful. We loop around and come to Keter, Tom. I have put everything ready for the visitors. I'll come to wash the floor of your room next. All you need is water and Vileda. Water is the oldest bulb. Water finds its way. What water brings, it takes away. It can be clean or dirty. It can give life or drown it. Akti. I didn't expect to see you here, but it makes sense. Can you help me find my way? One last time. Mm, now there's a devil in the fish trap. Don't be spooked by it so that shit won't start beating your underpants. Okay. I'll get the door open for you, Tom. So no, this is not the same as the cabin. There you go. The matter is a stake. Now comes the end of the rhyme. Thank you, Akti. So yeah, the cabin, last time we see the Bird's Lake cabin was an American nightmare and it crashed into a bog. This is a completely different building, but it's kind of like the same echoes of other things. The locations rhyme, but it's not the same. was here. I needed to write the ending. I only had one chance to get this right. The owls are not what they seem, right? I needed an ending that took everything already in return and extended it into a conclusion that would save us. Only the perfect ending would work. The novel return come true, my final divine work of art. First granted to the people of Bright Falls, and over time it would spread the celebration, reaching everyone. But now that he went through the spiral door, he's back in the dark place, so to speak. See, I've heard some debate with whether or not this room right now takes place in reality or in the dark place. I don't... I never got the impression that we were in reality in this very moment. The second we go through the spiral door, we enter the dark place. That's what it's there for. And it also enters this writing room in the dark place. Unless there's evidence that I'm not taking into account. Return's ending was an eternal deer fest that would keep spreading. Given time, Scratch would plunge the world into his nightmare. I had to stop that from happening. I had to write one more chapter for Return. A perfect ending that would save us all. I was the only one who could write it. Everything depended on this. On me. And this right here Any is... Any second now, Scratch mm -hmm. would burst through that door to stop me. Every plot thread dangled in my brain. It suddenly felt impossible. Something stirred in the room, coming to me. An idea. 
Well, I mean, mobile phones work in the dark place. Alan used one to talk to Thomas Zane at one point. And this also confirms that what happened in Deerfest did happen in reality, because Alan wouldn't care if this was happening if it only existed in the dark place. He's confirming that it's going to spread across the entire world, which is the stakes here. Well, I think that's what, at the end of the day, the clicker is doing in this scenario, is it's creating a permanent overlap of reality in the dark place. Yeah, so we're supposed to be getting a new ending, Andres, but let's go ahead and do this. The ending has to fit the genre if it's going to work. In a horror story, there's only victims and monsters. If there is Aero, they will ultimately pay a heavy price. I won't let the horror story take Logan and Casey. They were dragged into this. They need to survive. Non-negotiable. Not just them. We need to try to save everyone. The ending will have to be dark no matter what. The more people we save, the greater the cost. And the hero must pay the price. The scales always need to balance. Well, I mean, the one in Alan Wake 1 was the 68th annual Deerfest, which was 13 years prior in 2010, so it makes perfect sense. No, 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 Traveler in the Dark. I'm talking about the uh, Signal DLC of the original Alan Wake. He uh, found a cell phone in... Uh, there was, like, some text in the air that uh, Red Phone, he shined a light on it, and it created a cell phone, and he was talking to... I would argue the bright presence that was named Zane throughout the entire situation. We're not talking about this game where he's on a payphone. The dark horror ending. To save them all, the hero must pay the price. Something felt different. I'd never seen myself in a vision before, but it fit. Saga and I were both at the center of this story. She was now my co-author. This was the beginning of the end. We were characters in a horror story, charging blindly towards the finale. We still didn't have everything we needed. This would not work without the clicker. Which would imply that the first Deer Fest was in 1942. All right, some music time. But yeah, my interpretation of the ending with why in the original ending with why uh, Saga could when she would make the call and no one picked up is because you're not getting signal there. It's kind of like when she was in the overlap at the beginning of the game, and David said she tried to call her, and it didn't go through because you have to not the same tier for hours. The signal's not going to go through. You can still make a call, but it's just not going to connect. This is going to be a long intro here. Through darkest dark, I'm pushing through. Through the end, I'm reaching you. Though they keep saying that my baby. You guys can't hear me? Is, gone, I keep on laughing is it because the music's too loud? right here. I, 
I turned the music down a little bit on the OBS, so it should be mastered a little bit better. And yeah, I don't talk very loud, so... <laughs> Oh, I'm here, guys. I'm just listening to the music. Because last time I didn't listen to the whole song. I'm just trying to listen to the vibe. Yeah, I get the feeling this is also Alice's song, Melissa. Yes, Isaac, I did listen to the Night Spring song. I mean, there's not really much to get out of it. It's just describing the nature of the town. Mori, we're right at the end of the game. We're about to enter Saga's dark version of the mind place. All right, guys, let's go ahead and pop the volume of the game back up, and we're moving forward. Now we're in the epilogue. This was not intended by the original draft of Return. Whoa! I wonder if Alan was listening to all those songs oh. while he was writing this. No! Yeah, well... What's going on? Okay, we'll hold here for a second. Am I in the field office? No. It's the mine place. Okay. So in terms of the data mining, I know that there's a lot of cut dialogue from the game that some people mentioned was going along with one of my theories. Um, I don't really want to talk about data mining until the DLCs come out because some of the stuff that was cut might end up in the DLCs and there might be stuff that's data mined that's related to the DLCs, so I don't really want to mess around with it. Until we're absolutely ready. It just sucks because... Like, all the other games, I've this is the first time I've played, like, a legit Remedy game blind for the channel. Like, Crossfire X, sure, but that's not really related to the grander Remedyverse. So I, it's not really a big deal. But before we had years to dissect this game and have the community get together and break apart every piece of the narrative, doing it for the first time when it's first released specifically live is really an interesting way to piece your thoughts together when you, I may be missing information. Because normally what I'll do is I'll watch like 15 individual Let's Plays. I'll dissect the Reddit community. I'll dissect the wiki side. I'll go through it myself a dozen times. But we don't have time for that right now. Nothing's working. I can't think straight. Where is everything? I can't sense anyone. Okay. So remember when we were at the Deerfest scene and we were talking about how Alan is being confronted with shadow aspects about the negative aspects of himself that he has to recognize before he can integrate. And now Sog is about to do the whole thing. The exact same thing, just with her personal anxieties. And here we go. My work. It's all gone. What the hell is happening? I 
can't leave. Why can't I leave? And this is very much in the same boat as Alan stuck inside the cabin at, Col at the Bird's Lake cabin. This is kind of a similar scenario. Well, it's also a lot of negative thoughts. The dark presence took over Casey, stole the clicker from me. The last thing I remember is him throwing me into Colgen Lake. I'm in the dark place. I'm lost. I don't know how to get out. I don't know what to do. That wasn't me. Was it? That is you. That's the irrational part of your what? mind freaking out. Failed who? What's happening to the case board? Well, you also have to keep in mind mitigated risk that Saga has, because of her door being a door and an Anderson, has, is uniquely in a position to uh, get through stuff like this a lot easier than Alan, and she doesn't have as dark of an imagination. Alan's mind is twisted. Let's all be 100% honest. So I don't think we should have the Olympics of who got out of this scenario faster as a funny thing. It's... Saga does not have the same demons that Alan does. In any stretch of the imagination. Alan's demons are far, far scarier. So of course he's going to have a harder time. And he doesn't have the loophole of being able to basically walk through reality like Saga does. But anyways, let's move on. The Dark Presence took Casey. Casey is scratched now and he has the clicker. I remember sinking, but that doesn't explain why I'm in the mind place. She's right, Cauldron Lake is the gateway to the dark place. I'm in the dark place. I mean, it kind of reminds me of the ending of Doctor Sleep. If anyone's seen that, and the uh, climax in the Overlook Hotel, with how Danny defeated the uh, and the antagonist of that story, you'll know what I'm talking about. So this is really her right here, and what we're playing right now is the a different aspect of her mind. The board says I failed them. Who's them? I let everyone down. Logan, Casey, myself. This is my fault. My daughter is dead. My partner was taken over by a monster. I'm trapped in a dark place. Powerless. I'm not powerless. What is happening here? This isn't me. It is, though. You <laughs> like That's the thing. Is like You can reject it all you want. This is the scenario where we're talking Persona 4. You're not me. You're nothing like me. You know what I'm talking about? For anyone who's played Persona 4, this is that scenario. No, you're feeling that. You can't just say that you don't feel that. You are feeling that. You have to come to terms with it. Logan. I neglected my family for my job. I was too thrilled by the cases. The mysteries. I liked how dangerous the work was. And now that danger has destroyed my family. It killed my daughter. No. Casey. Casey depended on me, and I let him down. I wasn't watching his back. I got wrapped up chasing the wrong lead. He needed me. Now he's turned into a monster. He needed me. No, Other Saga is not in the oldest house. She's in the dark place right now. <laughs> I don't know where you're getting that, and there's no knowledge Something's she does not know about the wrong here. The doppelganger thing is a little sus to me, or it's you, or it isn't. No, this, Kareem, this is Saga. The other Saga is her. 
Because remember, there was a scenario in the Rider and Signal DLC where Alan is inside the Birds Lake cabin on the ground, basically having a psychotic break. And then the Alan we're playing throughout the story is a projection of him, the aspect of his mind. When he's talking to the Bright Presence through the uh, vehicle, I think there's like a truck or whatever he comes across, the quote-unquote Thomas Zane, but really it's the Bright Presence, told him, you are the part of Alan Wake that is capable of rational thought, which is why I'm speaking to you right now, where the other part of you is currently in the cabin going insane. So the other saga is the version that's the same thing as the other Alan in the cabin going nuts. She's going through this entire spiral of anxieties and negative self-talk, and this is just the rational part of her mind that's trying to piece it all together and get herself back under control. Yeah, this is a case board. We're not talking about the board. This is just a case board. Just because we use the same word doesn't mean anything. Yeah, this is the dark place reflecting her darkest thoughts and, the and feelings, which is why some of the lines of dialogue that come up in a second, I don't put it past her because, let's be honest, anyone who has been under high stress and anxiety thinks very dark things about the people that are the source of those anxieties. Like, anyone who's worked at, like, a... Uh, works with the public, whether that be, like, a cashier or you're working at a supermarket or fast food. I mean, I, I work with uh, insurance companies and I work with homeowners who have just had their house burnt down. And let's be real, they probably think bad things about me and when they become difficult... Like, you ever had a customer that try when you're working fast food that is just the worst person ever and you have those dark thoughts in your head that's what Saga will be thinking very shortly it doesn't mean consciously you really think that it just is that gut instinctual emotional outburst okay your partner Scratch took Casey and it's my fucking fault and here's the thing, is we can say, no, 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 it's not your fault, but we gotta remember, Saga went along with the ritual. She didn't have to put the heart through the chest, she did not have to finish the parade float, she did not have to do the things that push the story along. Remember, she's immune to it, she could have decided to get up and walk away, but she chose consciously because she was excited about the story, she wanted to see what would happen. She went along with it willingly. And things happen. So, yes, I wouldn't say she bears 100% responsibility. No, of course not. But to try to say that it's, she has n no part in playing this out is not true. She did have a small part in playing this out. I am a terrible mother. I let my daughter die. So this part of it, I would say, no, you did not have a part in this. <laughs> You did not let your daughter die as a result of this, but there is something that comes in a little bit later which contextualizes it, where she starts thinking along the lines of, I chose to leave my daughter behind because I was more excited about investigating this situation, which that is valid. That is a valid self-attack, even though it's twisted. I'm a failure. This is what I deserve. No, you do not deserve this. <laughs> no one deserves this. But you got to overcome all this seg negative thinking. Please, Mom, help. So this is interesting right here. So it says, description of injury. Subject seems physically weakened with some confusion. This is a report that we found in the morgue at the sheriff's station. Um, confusion about whereabouts and events. Similar symptoms to those becoming shaded individuals. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Physical wounds are minimal. Light abrasions. Possible mild concussion. But... Casey was being corrupted and I did nothing. But if you read it here, subject seems physically weak and blah, 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 blah. Exposure to the shadows. You knew he was hurt. You knew the Dark Presence did something to him. You didn't care. You only pretended to care when it was convenient. And the second he became a liability, you let Scratch have him. So even though what she's reading here, what's here on the left, is not what's on the right. She's misinterpreting it. She has the, the glasses theorem on her where she perceives the world differently through the glasses. Scratch was wake. How could I miss that? 
Yes, you mentioned this dark presence before. There were so many hints. How did you miss this? Wake was scratch. It was right under your nose. Wake was scratch. Scratch was wake. And she's just beating herself up over and over and over again. And this is going to hit her ego a little bit because she considers herself an incredible detective. But, yep. I mean, there's some details there no way where, like, we as the players knew who the Koskula brothers were long before Saga figured it out. And there's some legitimate, okay, I need to take this critique into moving forward rather than just say, I, oh, no, there's no way I could have known. No, there was ways you could have known. But that doesn't mean anything. You just have to take that and move forward with your life and do better in the future. I never should have trusted these. I mean, failure doesn't mean that you're a failure for the rest of your life. It just means learn the lesson, pick yourself back up, and move on forward. Night Springs. Logan and David love that show. Their weekly ritual. You're not a mother, but she resonates with you. Gotcha. Night Springs! And now we're back to other saga. But she can feel Casey now at the very least. The horror story. The story. My life! My family is just part of a book. Another white asshole deciding what I get to do, how I get to do it. He took my daughter from me. I'll never be free of this story from him. He used her. And here is just the irrational part of her brain lashing out. And that happens. I don't hold it against her because I can guarantee consciously that's not how she thinks. It's so dark here. there's new stuff here. Well, I'm wandering around like crazy to look at everything. Casey was hurt. I should have been watching his back. This case, this room, is any of it even real? This has all been a hallucination. So now she's starting to question herself. But, it, like, contextually speaking, for someone who takes that out of context, I can... There is no way out! Kind of, but in context, it's not really... I don't see it the same way. This is all a hallucination. Why is this happening? Shadow monsters, false realities, magical writers, really? Hey, you believed it. Case was injured. He needed backup and you were not there. And this is the fun one right here. And then it keeps She's giving not it to dead. you. God damn it. So the irrational part of her brain is trying to get her to accept it. while the rational part is still rejecting it. And you notice how the camp, the exposure on the pictures keeps getting darker and darker as time goes on? Almost like she's slowly being erased. No! I'm done with this! It just keeps coming back! What's happening? You took her from David and stuck her in a backwater shithole, except this did not happen. Use the manuscript pages as a crutch instead of doing my job. The pages were your excuse for always being one step behind. Now, the thing is, I will give a little bit of credence to this part right here, where it says, I use manuscript pages as a crutch instead of doing your job. I mean, technically speaking, that is a very fair um, self-criticism here, because all she really did rather than doing a full investigation, is she just read the page? Oh, cool, let's follow and see what that does. Any other investigator would have stopped and going, okay, pause, let's hit the brakes for a moment and take a look at this, rather than, oh, I'm going to go over here and grab a human heart out of a freezer, pick it up with my bare hand, and shove it through a freaking billboard of a witch. No legitimate investigator would ever do that. <laughs> like, that's just... But the thing is, she is so excited about... 
the story. I think this is Saga's biggest character flaw, is that she gets so caught up in the investigation and the story that she just turns off her rational thinking and just goes along with it. So I do think this is a fair. I do think this is fair. But I don't think you should take that as being a terrible detective. You should recognize it for what it is. You had that character quirk. You need to keep that in check the next time you come to this phase. Jesse would probably do that. Well, the thing is, Jesse has an excuse to do that because she, her childhood was formed by the uh, ordinary AWE, where she literally was going into other realities through a slide projector and summoning forth freaking demons like the Knot Mother into reality, and her all the adults in town were wiped out of existence and stuff like that. That's what characterized her childhood. So she, by default, is going to have magical thinking. She's going to think, okay, cool, that's not a problem. But Saga should know better. Yeah, she was excited. This was her first murder cult case. So yeah, she was like, yeah, let's go along with it. So yeah, that this one, I do believe, is a fair self-criticism, but it's something you need to learn from and move on rather than beat yourself up. I don't think the step she's taking about all the criticism and her beating herself up is healthy. It's not helpful. But we also need to recognize when there's something we do that we can improve upon in the future. See, uh, Wake was scratched all along, and I had no idea. There we go. It feels like I'm trapped in a nightmare. Stuck in an echo chamber with all my fears, my doubts, my insecurities. No, no, no. Jesse is far from grounded. <laughs> Jesse is far from grounded. The only reason that she seems grounded is because she's in a setting of insane paranormal stuff. If she was in reality, people would look at her like she's nuts. It's just she happened to find herself into a position where her insanity matches with reality. That's the only reason she feels grounded. Wake was scratched all along and you had no idea. So now this, from the perspective of her perspective, I don't think there's really any way she could have known this. So I don't think this is a fair self-criticism. But anyways, I ignore the fact that Dark Presence was affecting Casey. What the hell? I mean, I don't really know if there is a way to tell this. I mean, if she's going off the manuscript pages, she could have gotten the idea that Dark Thoughts could bring it out. And she did read a page about Casey being affected by the Dark Presence and did not act upon it. I mean, they probably could have not brought Casey to the lake, but who knows what would happen in that scenario. But so maybe I'm on the fence about this one. Well, the thing is, uh, like, if we say that everything that Jesse believes is not real, then we would say she's nope, very ungrounded. Nope, nope. So, like, it's no. Saga is 100% more grounded than Jesse. It was so obvious the Coscula brothers were behind the cult. Well, Max Bermuda, no, sh there's actually a uh, page right next to uh, Casey in the morgue that goes over his medical condition. Actually, weirdly enough, this thing right here that goes over the medical condition, that's right next to Casey, and Saga does read there's it. There's no way out! So she knows his condition, and they do mention the potential that the Dark Presence is affecting him. What's happening to me? This one, I am going to go ahead and say, yeah, you should have picked up on the Coastal Love Brothers earlier. 100%. But that's learn, live and let live, learn from it, and move on. Especially if you're reading the manuscript pages that details them. Come on. Well, what she... It's not even just saying that she needs to say no to all this. Is she needs to take the relevant self-criticisms into account and then learn from it, move forward, incorporate it into her conscious personality and become a better person while, while the fake 
anxiety. She needs to convince, tell herself, no, this is not real. This is this is just in my head. This is not a fair assessment of what happened. <laughs> Holy shit. Why do you hate me? Seems like things are changing around me as we walk. Because if we get into the mindset that all of our anxiety or all of our self-criticism is false, then we see ourselves in a narcissistic viewpoint where I'm perfection and there's nothing I can do to improve. But if you see yourself as everything, all of your anxieties and self-criticism are true, then you're just going to beat yourself up until you can barely function. So you really have to weed out the positives and the negative aspects and then reincorporate it. I spent too much time away from Logan. Oh no, we're not going to... Matt Matteo, we're not going to talk about CBT. <laughs> if anyone's curious about that, go check out some of my Psychonauts videos on Hollis Forsyth. Logan was alone. Come on! She spent every day by herself in that trailer. Not reality. Not reality, though. So, no, I do not agree with this one. Or just be like you and not give a crap, Draco. <laughs> There's no way out! The cult was just the beginning of the spiral. Casey was wrong to put his trust in me. What? No. See, here's a little thing. What would happen? Let's let's talk about hypotheticals. What would happen if Casey was running this investigation? Do you think he would have gone through with the rituals? That's really what this entire piece of evidence comes down to. Would Casey have gone along with the rituals? Who knows? Now, I do not think the what she's thinking, you fucked this case up so badly the FBC took over, I don't think that's accurate. Whatsoever. The FBC would have gotten involved regardless. So that has nothing to do with her uh, performance. And again, it just comes down to her personality flaw, where she just got so excited, shut off her rational thinking over the course of the investigation, and went along with the insanity. With no protection, I think that Casey would have gone through with the rituals. Okay. I mean, that's fair. I just... We're just I'm throwing things off. I mean, also, Amelia, you gotta keep in mind when it comes to the mold, is it... The smell of the mold is intended to make you want to eat it. It, it's not that, oh, just don't eat mold, but you, you're literally driven to want to consume it. Logan, the horror story used her. So there's no rationality. I mean, even the agents were told not to do it, but over time, when you're starving to death and it smells so sweet, it's literally like an intoxicating aroma that makes you want to consume it. I hate this, but it's all true. I had tried to silence these thoughts, focus on the case, but I can't escape them anymore. I'm drowning. I need a way out before I'm dragged under. There's no way out! Oh, original tech, we're talking about control for a second. That's why we're talking about mold. Sorry. I've had what you call this maniac. I never should have left Casey at the hotel by himself. Yep. I abandoned my partner to investigate on my own. No, no, no! You were so eager to be in charge that you left him behind. Now... I don't think this is entirely fair because they both agreed upon him staying with Wake, Casey staying with Wake, and her going on to check out Valhalla. They both agreed upon that course of action, so I don't think 
that was really part of it. But you could also make the argument that she did want to prove herself, so she wanted to stand on her own two feet and move things forward, which would be an uh, ego aspect of it, but who knows? I'm not her therapist. I'm not, I'm not inside her head, so I can't really say one way or another. My badge. Never should have taken this case. What the fuck? You were never home. There was always more work, more cases. You told yourself it was important. Now, this one, I think, technically is a um, fair self-criticism here. I think this one is... Um, because even in the opening game, in the opening part of the game, when Logan's on the phone with her, they mention that, "Oh yeah, well, sorry, I'm I'm gone. I'm always gone. I got another case. I'm always moving forward." And I might have a different perspective on this because I'm literally inside of her mind right now. Um, I don't think I've ever mentioned this um, publicly, either on stream or in the Discord before, but. I can empathize with Logan's position here because I am a child of someone who works in law enforcement and I grew up with them not there a lot because there's always something going on in my city that needs to be taken care of. So as a child I had I can I know probably what Logan was thinking. Even though you never verbally said this. Like, I never said this out loud, but it's still the thoughts in the back of your head. That whatever's going on in the city is more important than uh, your child. Now, that could be an irrational point of view on behalf of both Saga and Logan, or myself for that matter, but it is what it is. Okay, let's check and see how much more we have left. So it's just that one. There is two more under there, one more under here, one under there, one under there, and one more there. I think the dog wants to go outside, so let me go grab the door for him. I will be right back. See if I can find some more of these before we start profiling. No, I'm not reading any more. Oh, I have original tech. I don't remember if I have. Our manuscript pages can't change reality. I can't do this. You're off to dinner. No word, liquid Rufus. Take it easy. You enjoy your dinner. Merry Christmas, buddy. Dean for Dark Place Therapist 2024. <laughs> you know what? I will take that position. I mean, I am Loki after all. <laughs> uh, the story is a delusion you invented to hide from the truth. Not the case. But the story is trying to make her think this, which is understandable why she's having that thought. Let me see. Yeah, the audience knows she's a seer, but Casey does not. Scratch was too much for us. I should have made Casey stay behind. God damn it! You knew he was injured. Why the hell did you take him to Cauldron Lake? Now, you can also make the argument that if he was not there, 
then things would not have worked out so well because he was the one kind of keeping the wiring moving. So it's possible that everyone would have died right away, right then and there. But whatever. The water is so cold. Is her voice coming out of the private door here? Just out of curiosity. Okay, there's still one more. I'm trying to remember where it's at. How do you think Saga would have handled Emil Hartman? I honestly could not say. Okay, are we missing one? It feels like we're missing one of these pieces of evidence. There's no way out! Because I'm just under the impression that we have to do it before we do the profiling. Because the profiling is when she kind of stops and starts uh, getting herself back in touch. You believe Saga would have shot Hartman? I don't think she would have shot Hartman. Because that's just illegal. She's not Agent Nightingale here, everyone. <laughs> She's not that freaking... Yeah, Nightingale probably would have. But no, not her. Yeah, we have another profile. But I was for some reason under the impression that doing this would start all of the let's finish this uh sections all the this is what's really going on things no there has to be a way out i need a way out oh god none of this is real i've lost it i'm not even here the mind place isn't real a case about supernatural darkness I'm having a full-on psychotic break. Yes. I dragged Logan away to a tin can in Watery. No. She's dead because of me. No. There has to be a way out. Okay, let's see if something new popped up as a result. Away from death. Can't go to the door. Can't go through here. There's one more piece of evidence we need to find, but it's not spawning. Hmm. Yeah, because it's just this one right here. It's your fault you got hurt. There's one right there. Because everything that's on this line is how we end the uh, section. Will you do a new discussion stream after New Game Plus? Um, There's no way out. Technically, yes. I'll have to be talking with someone about how that's going to work. But yes. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be spawning. Okay, whatever. Let's just continue onwards. No! Scratch. I don't want to do that. He's using Casey now. Like he used Wake. Oh, that's how you get it. Okay. Well, we accidentally did it because I hit the wrong thing. I can't do this. It's too much. It's crushing me. I'm lost in this darkness. Casey's gone and it's your effing fault. Hmm, I don't see that as fair. I need a way out. It's over. There's no point trying. Everything is lost. There's no way out. No way to fix this. There's no way out. I'm stuck here forever. Just me and my past. My guilt. My mistakes. Hello there. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm stuck. But this is my mind place. My mind. Everything I need is here. It, it has to be. And one little detail else. Oh! The lights. No. No. I'm not giving up. Focus, Saga. The answers I need are here somewhere. I just have to look. 
yeah, Alan has been living this for 13 years. But there's also another thing we have to keep in mind about the differences between Saga and Alan's position right now is Saga wants to get herself back together so she can move forward and save her daughter. Alan wanted to self-terminate. The writer in Signal DLC was all about an aspect of him that wanted to self-terminate because he didn't believe he need there he had any purpose in life anymore. And as a result, the Dark Place manifested that desire and tried to kill him. Over and over again. And Saga does not have that same unconscious desire, so it's not as vicious with her right now. Just want to add that little detail in. Okay, what are you doing? Uh, don't make a big deal out of it, Mom. No hugs, no hugs. Oh no, we'll get to the salt shaker. That's one of them. We're gonna do these one at a time. The mug Logan gave me. I'm not a perfect mom, but I'm doing my best. Logan was just being nice when she gave me that mug. I never deserved her. And there we have the back and forth. Her first comment's more accurate, is she's accepting responsibility for her shortcomings, but also acknowledging that that does not make her a bad mother at the same time. Because we have this image of perfection when it comes to relationships of any kind, and that's not practical. No one is perfection. We're not gods, so to speak. And then she immediately gets that, because she's having a psychotic break right now on the outside. This is the rational part of Saga, the, the irrational one having the psychotic break is immediately going to twist that concept into a negative aspect, which is not entirely. Oh, no, 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 Max, we found it. The, the uh... Latest one was um, for profiling. See, here's the salt shaker right here. Oh, really, Anderson? The salt shaker? We've come to this? You loosen the top while I was getting the napkins? Oh, 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 oh. Didn't you? Ah, it's in my pockets! It's, it's, it's in my shoes. Stop, 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 stop. Laugh. Yeah, I think this is new, actually. I don't think we... I don't remember that detail. It might have been in the original, but... But I don't recall. Casey trusts me. I know he does. I'll just let him down again. Casey never jokes around with anyone else he respects and trusts me well wasn't that um that is new actually because the first time around this loop during the first time in the base game that was the salt shaker it was actually a picture on the wall here or uh, a little gift card or not a gift card a, a picture on the wall here that was framed and it showed alex at saga's house doing dishes and she mentions about how a big softy he is and about how he has become part of their family so to speak, and that was what we used as evidence, but the salt shaker is now used in its place. No, the salt shaker was here, and it was commented on, but not here. This is what was used to fill in the part about her being a bad partner, so to speak. That is different. Because I never once heard that line of dialogue about like oh i got it in my pockets i got it in my shoes i got it that like that that was not in the base game she comments on the salt shaker but not to that degree hey hey just calling just to say call thanks for your note. your note oh sometimes, sometimes i just I get in my head, in my head too, head much. too much. much so, so thanks, thanks for pulling me out. out you're really you're the best, best. Really. 
Yeah, you're you're okay. okay. Talk soon. Talk soon. You're right, Teflon Billy, because originally he had Casey's voiceover saying about how he appreciates her um, after his wife left him and he needed someone to fall back on and Saga and her family were there to support him after his wife left. So that was the original line of dialogue there. And then this was altered, which is interesting why it was changed. Saga, for what it's worth, I think it's important that Logan grows up seeing you do what you love, what you're great at. That will teach her so much. There will be times just like this when you are questioning your choices, your competence, even your own sanity. When things get dark, remember to trust and love yourself as much as your family does. You won't be perfect, but I know you'll be amazing. Love you always, Mom. And this is probably Freya knowing that something was coming down the pipeline, and this was here... It sounds like Freya was specifically referring to this scenario. Yeah, it's here. It's different for Final Draft, Max. 100%. No. This is all real. I know it is. The FBI will kick me out. I'll have nothing. She's spiraling. No pun intended. Did Mom know something like this would happen? That I would need to hear these words again someday? She absolutely did. I mean, she is an Anderson, after all. <laughs> I made you a charm bracelet for good luck. I made a matching one for me, so bring me back something cool from Washington. It's not too late. I can still save them. No matter what I do, someone will get hurt. I don't know what to do. I'm afraid. I'm my own worst enemy. The fears in my head are stopping me from trying. Mm -hmm. From leaving. Mm -hmm. And that is true for so many of our own problems. Is our own fears and anxieties are what stop us from doing the things we want. She wanted us to stay connected. God, I love that kid. But it, more specifically, it also tells her that she was still alive at the time when she left. Because this charm bracelet was given to her before she left to go on this investigation. Literally just finished the ending uh, two minutes ago and saw this. Hey, we're almost done! Welcome on in! So I, I do not know how New Game Plus ends. Um, I don't know if you finished the base game or New Game Plus, but we're doing New Game Plus now, which has a different ending. Just letting you know um, any name in the world. Stop, Stop blaming, blaming yourself, yourself Anderson. Anderson. A knife in the arm is just, just part of the part job. job. If you're going to keep fussing, you can get the hell out. <laughs> Look, Dad, leave the whiskey. whiskey. Oh my god. I just noticed your comment there. Yeah, we are over 300 people in the stream right now, which is absolutely insane. Hello, everybody who's watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I have never seen this kind of turnout before. I mean, my streams usually have maybe like 10 to 15 people in it, so this is actually kind of nuts. I love you all. You finished Final Draft yesterday, so it was really fun to see another perspective. Absolutely. I mean, that's why I love watching other people play this game, is because they gave me perspectives that I didn't have. And I have learned so much from watching other people dissect these games. Because you kind of get into an echo chamber when you analyze something by yourself. So having the other viewpoints definitely helps. Our job is dangerous. Casey himself told me that. It's no one's fault. Fault! It is! It is! Yep, it's a dangerous job, and... Casey has never blamed me when things go sideways. It's all part of the job. Yep, 100%. Hit the likes like it's hot. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, because right now it looks like we got five likes on it. It's fine. I mean, it definitely helps with the algorithm, but it's all good. I am honored by this award. Thank you. While our agency must continue to improve, the work we do here, protecting communities, pursuing the truth, it's the most important work there is. Stacy Marrows, we mentioned uh, 
supervisory special agent at some point as well. You're watching uh, Lana Batar from Team Four Star plays afterwards. Nice. I was able to fill in some conceptual non-spoiler blanks. Gotcha. Just found your streams recently and really love your thoughts and analysis while you played. Cheers to everyone and a Merry Christmas. Hey, you too, Buffalo. I mean, like, we mostly do video analysis. Streaming is not the primary thing we focus on here, but for Remedy Game, yeah, I gotta do it. I just gotta. It's okay to be afraid. But I can't let this end here. I can't. I can't. I can't. I just... I just want it to stop. Giving up won't make this stop. Logan needs me. Oh, Casey there it is. needs me. Sorry, my computer hadn't updated on the likes thing. It's updated now. You're a terrible detective, but you had a commendation. Casey gave me no end of shit for that speech. I'm so close. <laughs> the dark place wants me to hate myself. But I just need to get inside my own head. Mile High Strangler case. I actually am very curious about that case. And there's also the one that Casey mentions about someone hiding the bodies in the woods. Some previous... I would actually be really interested to see more of their investigations before this. I've made mistakes. I'll make more. But I can do better. And I can start by leaving this room. I'm afraid it will hurt, but nothing will hurt more than not trying to save them. It will hurt, but I will fight. Hey there, Ja and Belsa. Um, Dean, longtime fan of your work and channel. I've been playing catch up on your streams and finally caught up. And Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, everyone. Well, thank you. I'm glad to have you in. It's so nice to be able to see the people that I don't get to uh, interact with a lot on these live streams. I mean, because I, normally I'm streaming on the secondary channel, but I'm very much considering just moving everything back over to this primary one. Because I think a lot of people don't realize that I do a lot of streams on a, a different channel, but... I mean, the best part of what I do is interacting and talking to everybody. Being able to talk about the games that I love. So essentially what's going on down here in the dark place is what we refer to as uh, the shadow work. Where you're analyzing, you're doing the metacognition of going into the darkest parts of your head and bringing that to the forefront and integrating it. And it's not a good experience. It's the dark night of the soul, so to speak. Can I leave by overcoming my doubts and fears? The Dark Place tried to trap me here. The only way to leave is facing it head on. Wake called it a nightmare. I need to dive into that nightmare and find a way back home. Uh, the second channel is called GU underscore streaming, Alessandro, if you want to go check it out. You're at the Christmas party, but you're looking at the stream. Well, tell, you know, Kevin, tell everyone at the party hello for me. Case closed. Turn review. Oh, so yeah, that's back. And here we go. Wake in the clicker. Let's go ahead and end all the stuff off just to make sure we didn't miss anything. The story. That's all gone. Cult of the tree. Where did the cult take us over the shadow? So we're still missing a lot of stuff. Like, a lot of stuff. And there's nothing we can do about it, but... Anyways, moving onwards. Alright, everyone, we're heading on through. And Kareen, sorry, I just saw the uh, super chat there. The board desires slash design slash projects the merriest slash exquisite slash happiest of Christmas slash holidays slash encounters to you all. You as well, Kareen. Thank you so much. And I haven't been able to find a guide online that truly shows 
Let my twin in the other office lead the way. And I completely forgot to go do that, but it's okay because we got through the fight anyways. Let's go. I haven't been able to find a guide online that shows you where everything is, so I'm not sure if I'm missing it or if it's because it's bugged it's not showing up. That's exactly it, Liridan. People get turned into Taken when they lose the fight against their own anxieties. Saga, wake up. The payphone was ringing. Somehow I knew the call was for me. Um, Draco, do you mind putting a link to the Discord in the chat real quick? Oh! Hello there! This is new! Hi? And it looks like he's not wearing his trench coat anymore. He's wearing one of the hand-sewn ones. And they don't want to talk to me. Okay, let's go talk to... Answer the phone first. I might need to speed up, um, because I just got a call regarding our, uh, Christmas Eve dinner. So I think I'm kind I streamed a little too long today, but let's go ahead and finish up the game. Hello? It's me again. You need to go to the statue of Parliament Tower Plaza. To make your ending come true, you will need what's inside the shoebox there. The ending? A shoebox? Who is this? Hello, Alice. And they're still not talking to me. Well, we know they're here because they went into the dark place for us, but they weren't here the first time around. Yes, that is Alice Dizzy that's on the phone. Agent Anderson. Is that really you? Sorry, this place likes to play tricks. Sheriff Breaker? What happened to you? How did you end up in the dark place? I was brought here. Snatched away from the morgue by a man named Orlin Dorr. Been trying to piece it together for... Well, it feels like a long time now. I need to get to Parliament Tower Plaza. Do you have any idea where it is? This place, it's like trying to find your way around in a dream. I've been trying to map it, but it keeps looping, shifting. Like, there are many versions stacked on top of each other. There is a page. Describes Dor finding his way through this place. I tried to follow the steps, but... No luck. Can I see that page, Tim? Of course. In fact, it's the page I tried to give you back in the morgue in Bright Falls. Huh. Now that I think about it, maybe Dor brought me here to keep you from reading it. Here. I'm going to keep looking for Dor. The closer I get, the closer I feel to waking up. I need to find the man behind the curtain. Warling Dor walked across the rain-slick tiles of Caldera Street Plaza. He stopped at the door to the construction yard. A poster for his talk show hung there. He stepped through, willing it to take him to Parliament Tower Plaza. I know what I need to do. The door to Parliament Tower Plaza was at the construction yard. Um, technically speaking, Tim is mentioned in only one manuscript page, which we're about to read. Who is this door person? He's here. Somewhere. 
I've been seeing his face in my dreams for years. <laughs> this whole thing is insane. But he is much more than he seems. He's connected to all of this. Okay, first things first, let's go back. Now that we've gone through another narrative flag, I'm going to go back to the old gods real quick and just see if anything's changed. Nope. Okay, let's do the next narrative flag and then come back to this. So I think during my first run, we did not check this out. Warland Dor walked across the rain slick tiles of Caldera Street Plaza. The rain didn't seem to touch him. He sensed his steps were being observed, documented into the story. He allowed it. This one time for this one reason. To be passed on by his unwilling disciple. To read at the right time. His unwilling disciple, the that's what they that the dark as. place took the shape of New York City. Drawn for the mind of Alan Wake. In part for the writer to navigate his prison. In part to torment him as he struggled to find his way out. Dor was not bound by the rules as Wake was. He came and went as he pleased. For now, Dor entertained the writer's fantasy. For a purpose known only to him. At the edge of the plaza, he stopped at the door to the construction yard. A poster for his talk show hung there. Another part of Wake's fiction. He stepped through, willing it to take him to Parliament Tower Plaza. And I love that how everyone is just deadpan, but of course Door poses for his photograph here. Because of course he does. This is the first time I've seen a page about Warland Door. Who is he? A door that stands between two rooms is in both. A door that can lead anywhere is everywhere. That door is the center. He governs the currents of reality. With all the powers mixed up in this, it's hard to know who's playing who. Opening too many doors. Mm -hmm. This isn't important right now. I can look into it later. The page describes him moving through the door. How can I do that? The dark place has many faces and many names. It is a mirror reflecting all possible realities. The family of doors have the power to shift between these realities, here and elsewhere. If I can find a way to navigate through this nightmare, maybe I can find a way to get back home. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. And still nothing there. Okay, so now we're going to follow this and go through the construction yard. And we're back here. Time to head up into the plaza, and we're about to get beaten up a little bit here. If I remember correctly, I these fade outs don't up like us. And find that statue. Come on, come on, grab it. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's check our quick menu. So we're good there. Let's go ahead and set you up to here. Good. All right. You let me go. Oh, no. You pushed me. Enough already. Okay. Fingers crossed that we do not have to go against some of them. Let's go run over to Odin and Tor real quick, just to double check. And I do not think anything's going to happen here. It does not happen here. Okay. There's the shoebox. The clicker. And, and a some kind light. of bullet. Shining with light. How did the clicker get here from Washington? <laughs> Now we need to get 
back to safety. Alright, if I remember correctly, I do not need to go back to the phone. I just need to run back down into the subway. We are going to be attacked one more time right down here, which is not going to be fun. So let's see what I can do. Stop it. Damn it. I'm wasting it. Damn it. Not cool. Okay. Nope. Target him. There we go. I'm, I'm dead. Wow. Two deaths. Wow, I just got my second death. Damn it. That was just a cluster F. I mean, what I planned to do was use the flare to run to the door, but I didn't even get the opportunity to run to the door. I was planning to run to the door, but it would not let me. This is what I was trying to do, but the guy grabbed me. The phone again. Still nothing here. Yes? Hello. Uh, you don't know me, but you need to listen. Hold on. How did you know the clicker would be there? This is important. Alan's lost. He doesn't have the ending. He needs your help to finish the story. How am I supposed to help him from here? Okay. I'm in the dark place. Wake is in Washington. I could talk to him in overlaps before. My mind place is more powerful than I ever knew. I can try to contact him. Okay, so they're still not talking to me. Are you guys sure that they speak to me? Has anyone played a version where they do speak? No, Tim. I, the only way, the only two points My I only died was here and um, the mind when place. playing Alan briefly. I have to try. You've seen it. Oh my God, there's so many little bugs like this, and it annoys me. They do. They speak on ESP mode. So if I go over here. Nope. Yes, they speak. So go ahead and talk. Because I thought talking to Wake would immediately kick into the next... Okay. So do the, the Alan Wake thing first. Profile Alan first. Okay. I just thought that this would initiate the next phase of the game. Alan. We need to talk about the ending. Saga. What is this? My mind place. I've reached out to you like this before. But I understand more about it now. You see a visions too. I used to think they were ideas, inspiration, but they're real. Just like this now. I try to use them to make the story come true. So this is coming from both of us. Maybe that's how we could communicate in the overlaps. We could use this to stop Scratch. First, I need the ending. So there's a problem with the ending? I don't have the ending. It has to be perfect, but I don't have time to figure it out. I don't know what to do. Fuck. I'm so sorry. This whole thing is a fucking mess. I agree. But we can still figure this out. 
And what exactly does perfect mean? The elements of the ending need to come from the story's pre-existing parts. To make matters worse, this is a horror story. Oh, they're not supposed to show up until after the portal's open? Okay, I gotcha. You don't need to tell me this is a horror story. Right. The ending has to fit the genre if it's going to work. In a horror story, there are only victims and monsters. There must be a way to bring a hero into the story. If there is a hero, they will ultimately pay a heavy price. I mean, Alan does have a comment earlier on that there, how many authors are there to a story, and there's one for every point in time that they're writing. I can't let because the, the same person is a different Casey. person when they, they come back. Like Alan, A, B, C, and D. They need four to different survive. people. Non-negotiable. Not just them. We need to try to save everyone. I have an idea how to help Casey. He's a real person who I twisted into a character. He isn't my creation, so he isn't a suitable host for the Dark Presence. I can write that into the ending to drive that fucking thing out of him. So the ending has to be earned, set up by the story. You can't build a case without supporting evidence. That's the only way to make it stick. Well, if the ending has to fit the story, this is how I see it. Return is a story about a story that comes true. And I'm a character in the story. Not just a character, the hero. Okay, a hero. <laughs> in any case, I've been through hell to be here. And this is my life. It feels earned to me that I rise above the story and be there to create the ending. Yes. That's what we're doing. Here, now. We're figuring out the ending I need to write. This isn't Scratch's ending. But this isn't your ending either. This is our ending. You aren't the only one deciding these things anymore. You're right. I can't do this alone. Every time I write, things only get worse. You beat this thing back in 2010, Alan. And here you are doing the same again. You're a hero, too. We're in this together. Then let's bring it home. The ending will have to be dark, no matter what. The more people we save, the greater the cost. And the hero must pay the price. One of the heroes. The scales always need to balance. <sighs> Fuck it. Let's go with this. Are you sure? <sighs> There's no time for anything better. Scratch could be here any second. Then that's our ending. I have the clicker. I'll find a way to get it to you. And I'll get the pages down. See you on the other side. Well, see, Lamp, what they mentioned, the, um... What's the, what's the name of the, uh... The Grand Master mentions that because Alan assumed the role of Casey in the Dark Place, he has become a character. Because he's playing the role of Casey. And they're still not talking to me, guys. Glad we caught you. Oh, here we go. We missed you first time around. First time? We've been performing on door show. We finally buried the hatchet. Nice. I haven't buried shit. Okay, bro. good. We're just helping Tom. I'm leaving the dark place. Come with me. Our time back there is done. But you got this, dear Saga. Adi has set up a puddle for you to swim out of. Once more with feeling. I wish ah. we could more time together. This isn't goodbye, kiddo. Tom told us not to say anything about what's coming. But 
We'll see each other again. Nice. Okay, that gives me hope. So Ati uh, in the bucket in the cauldron, pouring it in the writing room, linking, overlap. Gotcha. Beautiful. Okay. Good to know. Buried the hatch it. Yeah, I caught that too. Let's do this. Alan? Saga. I finished it. The ending we talked about. I have the clicker and the bullet of light. Let's do this. I have to be the one to do it. I see it clearly now. This part at least. Okay. We have met here before. Time loops in the dark place. Every choice you make affects everything that comes before and after you make it. He's here. Like it does when you change a detail in a story you're writing. Yep. Casey? The end. Scratch. Now! out of the crater of my skull. The dark presence was born from the remains, feeding on the horror around it to grow. was hungry for more. Gotcha. And I was missing the small part of myself that it had been born from. Alice, love is strange. Even apart, we're still together in our memories. So it was we scratched each other through it. hell Got it. to set us free. Again and again. Different versions of us. Alice helped me get there. Where I needed to be. It has taken so long. The process to change reality is so delicate. To be true in just the right way and still find a way past our flaws. So many drafts, so many photographs, so many lives lived outside of time. An eternity apart on this journey to finally arrive here. Okay, so that confirms that Scratch was the, the Dark Presence was influencing the initial draft of the story. Beautiful. We got the confirmation. Is it over? Anderson. Logan? Logan? Are you all right? I had a terrible nightmare. Can you come home, Mom? Oh, baby. It's over now. You're all right. I'm here. I'm on my way home. I love you. Okay. She's all right. Makes sense. Dragged into a nightmare, dark place, etc. Okay. Master of two worlds! There we go! Yep, that's no. ending of the hero's journey. The master of many worlds. That, yep, because that is exactly 
the last phase of the hero's journey is you go through initiation, you get the dragon's gold, you bring the gold back into reality, and you take it back home with the knowledge of whatever the dragon's gold represents, and you become the master of two worlds. That is the final part of it. Oh boy. All right, so to so anyone who has finished this, is there um, any mid credit or post credit scene? As childhood died, the I'm going to have to unfortunately speed through this because I am late for my Christmas Eve dinner. But let me know real quick. And unfortunately, I can't sit around and talk a lot. We will save that for the post for the uh, post game uh, New Game Plus discussion. Okay. So yeah, it makes 100% sense that Logan was trapped inside of a nightmare where she probably would have stayed in that nightmare permanently if this didn't work out properly. Nothing? No master of the... There is a post-credit, but not a mid-credit. Okay. Master of many worlds. And I cannot skip through this. Damn it! <laughs> and unfortunately, I cannot skip this. There was discord. Heroes and villains. Poets of the Fall. And the world. Well, I need to wait for the post credit scene at the very minimum. Yeah, Logan fell, hit her head, had a nightmare the next night. You didn't get a post credit scene? Press R2 and laugh. Oh god, no, we're not gonna do that R. Sorry, I'm just reading through chat right now. Oh, there we go. There we go, I just have to pause it and then I can fast forward. Tell my family I got stuck in traffic. Well, the thing is, is my family lives like two miles away and it's all surface streets. So I can't even make the claim that, <laughs> that it, oh, I got stuck in traffic. Sorry, there is no traffic. Hey there, Andres Rodriguez. Thank you so much, buddy. Before I forget, Merry Christmas, everyone. Yes, Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm really sorry that I have to bum rush through the ending here and we can't talk too much about it. But it makes perfect sense because there's a scene, like, basically all of American Nightmare occurred in one of uh, Barry's nightmares as well while he was listening to Night Springs. Alan woke up, becomes the master of two worlds. Many worlds, according to this. And this is the ascension phase of it, but now we still need to know what happens from there. And I think I'm more on board with Al that that final scene in the writing room being in reality. I think I'm finally more on board with that because we have more evidence for it. You think maybe Alice put her essence into the light bolt and now they're one? I mean, potential. All, all in memory of Lance Reddick, Brett Madden, and Sammy Vanatalo. Yep, 100%. The journey through the night continues. And that's it. So yeah, there is no post credit scene. We did have the mid credit scene when it came to Alice, but not for this one. Okay. Oh, boys. Okay, so we will be doing another um, post-game discussion it with uh, someone else. Um, I don't know when that's scheduled. We might be doing that this weekend, but I need to talk with the individual and get that scheduled. Sorry, guys. I do have to run. I very much apologize. I kind of... Yeah, I agree. I kind of wish that we would add uh, James McCaffrey's name into the credits now. Retroactively, I do agree with that. 
I like I, I very much apologize, but I'm very late as it is. I spent way too much time in Saga's mind place and kind of burned up all of my time here. But as soon as the um, DLC comes out, we will be playing that as well. I will also be um, I wasn't intending to, but I will be playing through the first two Max Payne games next. I was intending to do God of War Valhalla, but um, in light of uh, James McCaffrey's passing, I feel I want to play through those two games with everybody. And you all Peace out, everybody. I gotta run. Love you all. What, Ludgaro? <laughs> type quick, type quick. I'll, I'll wait for your post. Nothing. Okay, okay, later, guys. Peace out.